Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for July 22nd, 2021. I'm teaching a series entitled, You Are Not a Mistake. I want you to know that. I want you to know that God made plans for you from the foundations of the world. You are destiny's child. You. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter when you were born. You were born because of why you were born. You were born because there is a great designer. God is completely purposeful. He does nothing haphazard. He planned for your arrival. He planned for your success. He prepared you for such a time as this. We're going to see today that he sanctified you. He set you apart. He ordained you for your specific assignment. He put his seal of approval on you. Oh my God, I'm ready for this word. I want you to open up your heart to receive what God is going to say to you on today. This is going to be today's word. Tomorrow, you, you'll come back and you get another word. But for today, I want you to know some things. I want God wants you to know some things about his plans for your life. You are not a mistake. So that said, uh, I've been teaching this series now. I just started it this week, Destiny's Child, You're Not a Mistake, and I trust that you've enjoyed it thus far. We've been looking at uh, the prophet Jeremiah, and I'm just laying the foundation for the series this week, right? So the title of today's message is, God Set You Apart for His Purpose. I want you to know that God set you, look at me, you, you, God set you apart for His Purpose. All right, so let's talk about it. This is Jeremiah chapter one. We've been looking at verse five. We we looked at five through eight. Today, I'm going to read to you five through nine. So Jeremiah one, verses five through nine, God set you apart for his purpose. This is what the Bible says, New King James Version. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were sanct- before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Then Jeremiah said, ah, oh, Lord, behold, I cannot speak. I, I'm a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go where I send you and you, and you will do what I send you to do. And you shall, uh, whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand. Um, I haven't, I haven't got to verse nine yet as far as teaching yet. I'm going to get there in this series. This is so good. Then the Lord put forth his hand. What was he called to do? Prophesy. What was, what is a prophecy? What is a, what is somebody who prophesies? What's somebody who speaks God's words? So the Lord said, no, I got you. I got you. Don't worry about it. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said, "Mm, I have put my words in your mouth. When I get to that, it's going to be good. I'm not going to deal with it today, but I just wanted to read it for you. All right. So uh, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the underlying point that I'm teaching thus far in this series is that God already mapped out your life, that God already made plans for you from the foundations of the world, that you are not a mistake. And so before your mama met your daddy, God made plans for you. And so if you, be- I believe that this is very clear in scripture. And if you believe that, then the goal of your life has to be to go out there and become who God planned you for you to be, right? You have to, the goal of your life has to, has to be to discover and then to deploy into your purpose and to become whatever God pre-planned from the foundations of the world. And so if that's the case, and it is, I'm going to, I'm going to share some things about Jeremiah and then some other things from some other scriptures. And the fact of the point of today's message is that God took you before you were born and he set you apart. He set you apart for an intended and specific purpose. Let's talk about it. So what does this mean for you Today, I have several things to share with you in this morning. Let's start with number one. This is where I need you to rid, rid your heart and your mind of all distractions that kind of lock in this morning. You ready? Number one, here we go. God said to Jeremiah, we already read it and talked about it many times. Before I formed you in the womb, I already knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. And so while God is saying this to Jeremiah, this is one of those things where, yeah, you can say, well, this is not, you know, um, New Testament epistles where Paul is saying this applies to everybody. Okay, God is saying this to Jeremiah without question. This is a conversation between God and Jeremiah, and Jeremiah wrote it down for us to read through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But we can deduce uh, that what is true for Jeremiah is true for me, it's true for you, it's true for us. And that being the case, then the text says that basically God had uh, set us apart, sanctification, and then he had an ordination service in heaven for us before we ever took one breath. So let's talk about that for a minute. Let let me unpack 
Jeremiah 1 and 5 a little bit. I've been unpacking it, uh, but I want to I wanna do that a little bit more. You ready? All right, so the first thing I want to say is the word sanctified means set apart. So let's talk about that for a minute. The word sanctified means set apart. Uh, so set apart. God set you apart for his divine purpose. He did this before you were born. And so when you think about this, um, he set you apart. You set things apart for specific reasons. Let me get practical for a minute. I'm just going to use like a practical example. I like to teach by precept and example. So practically speaking, Isabella and I are going to the Dominican Republic this weekend. We're going to be there for weeks. We're taking our kids. We're going to be there. And so now, uh, since we're going to be there for weeks, um, and yeah, we, we have a place that we already have stuff there. No, we've been preparing for the trip. And then we're also going on, you know, we do things on missions. So we have things that we have to take and all of that. So now Isabella has been setting things apart for the trip. And so there are things that maybe we have used in the past. We use it for a different purpose. And let's say I'm going to go grab that. And Isabella said, no, don't touch that. That's for the DR. It's been set apart, right? So maybe something that I thought was for one purpose Isabella could be like, no, Isabella does all the packing, by the way, so I don't, I don't have to do all that. But anyway, she might say, don't touch that because that's been set apart for a specific purpose. Maybe we bought some of those things in the past for something else, but she's like, no, not that one. That set came in, we ordered it on Amazon or whatever, it came in, and now this has been set apart for X purpose, for a specific purpose. This is a basic example that I'm using, right, this morning, but, but here's the point. The point is that before you were born... God set you apart for a specific purpose. Maybe God had a, a conversation with an angel in heaven about you. Now, you know, and, and looking at you in the spirit before you were born, uh, the angel might have said, oh, what about this person, that person? And God says, no, well, I set them apart for a specific, for this. I set them apart for that. And so I have purposed some things in their heart, in my heart for them to do. And then I'm not going to send them to the earth until just the right time. And so you and I, we're here for such a time as this. And so God is so purposeful that he set us apart for a specific reason. And then he didn't send us to the planet until it was just the right time. And so now he sends us to the earth and we were born where we were born, when we were born, because of why we were born for such a time as this, God set you, set you apart first and then deployed you into this planet at just the right time for a specific assignment. I want you to let that sink in for a minute. I mean, like, think about it. If you really believe that, you know that you are special, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you internalize what I just said and you believe what I just said, then it does something for your confidence that you know that, that I am special. I am fear. I listen, I am unique. I am God's beloved. I am God's child. And God prepared for me and God sanctified me and God set me apart and God held on to me. He didn't send me to the planet until it was just the right time for him to send me to the planet. And then he sent me to the planet at just the right time. And he prepared for me and he prepared for my success and he prepared, prepared for my arrival and he prepared people for me. And he set, he sets up divine appointments for me. And, and so he, he makes sure that I bump into this person in the mall. He makes Make sure that I bump, bump into this other person at this conference and he he organizes and he orchestrates and he opens doors for me that I cannot close and he closes doors for me that I cannot. Oh, I am not a mistake. I mean, he's he's put he's moving on people's hearts and he's raising up people to use their power, their ability, their, their influence and their money to help me in ways that I cannot help myself because God wants me to do what he sent me to this planet to do. And he set me apart to do it from the foundations of the world. My God. So it doesn't matter. Listen, if if other people didn't believe in me, it, it doesn't matter. Even if your parents said you would never be nothing, you would just be, you will, you, you're just like your dad. You ain't never going to do this. You ain't not, listen, I don't care what people say. It doesn't matter. They can't define you because they did not design you. The one who designed you set you apart for such a time as this. The one who designed you sent you into this planet at just the right time. And then he ordained you. Right in the text, not only did he separate you, but he ordained you. Let's talk about ordination. So I was licensed to preach. I started preaching in 95. I was licensed to preach in 97. I've been, I got ordained to preach in 2002. And so in 2002, once I was ordained, right, ordained to preach the gospel, that's it. Once you're ordained, you're ordained. I'm ordained as an elder. I can operate as a pastor. That's it. Once I'm ordained and I got ordained in 2002, what happens is having a license for something is one thing, but having an ordination, that means that there's an external body 
that validated you. There's an external body that put their stamp of approval on you. There's an external body that, that has said, you know what? We validate whatever the person is being ordained for. There's, there's somebody else, not you. You didn't just come up with it yourself. And I know that it's 2021. And I know you could probably get an ordination online for, in five minutes. But that's not what I'm talking about. Let's, let's forget that for a minute. I'm talking about real ordination. A real ordination service has weight to it. A real ordination service means that there's an external body that, that has evaluated you and there's an external body that is validating what God is doing in your life and there's an external body that's putting their stamp of approval on you. Listen, Jeremiah was from the tribe of Levi. He was part of the Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood, they could not be ordained to be a priest until the age of 30. Why? Because they had to be prepared. I told you many times that you have to be processed to be able to carry the weight of the anointing associated with your assignment. You can't just walk into your purpose. Paul tried to do it right away. He was not ready. No, listen, you have to be prepared for this thing. Even though uh, Jeremiah was born in the bloodline of Levi, he could not be ordained as a priest until the age of 30. He had to wait. He had to be processed. He had to be trained. He had to be prepared. And then he had to be externally validated. And so if that's the context through which God is speaking to Jeremiah, what God was saying to Jeremiah is that I am your external validation and I had an ordination service in heaven before you were born and I put my stamp of approval on you and I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations before your mama met your daddy. I'm talking about how amazing is that? If you believe that, I believe this. I believe this with all my heart. If you believe that God had an ordination service for you, that God set you apart and Boom, put a stamp of approval on you. God set you apart and breathed on you for your specific purpose. Then yes, you you can never be jealous of anybody else because you don't have their assignment. Why, why would you even worry about other people? I can celebrate the diversities of giftings and callings without jealousy. I'm not them and they're not me. I'm comfortable being me. I'm Rick Pena and I'm cool with being Rick Pena. I know who God called me to be. I am who I am. I, I, I'm going to operate in my own flavor. I, I'm going to operate in my own way. I'm never going to be jealous of anybody else because God set me apart. God had an ordination service. God put a stamp of approval on me from the foundations of the world. Look at me. God validated you. He validated you in heaven, just like he validated Jeremiah. And he did it from the foundations of the world. He did it before you were born. God put a stamp of approval on you before your mother met your father, before they even looked at each other. This is how, listen, when you believe this, if you really believe what I'm saying, you know that you are special in God's eyes. You know that God went out of his way to prepare you for such a time as this. And if this is true, and I know it's true, then your life can't be about selfish desires. Your life has to be about God and about the plans that God made for you from the foundations of the world. Your life can't be about you. Your life has to be about him. You can never be a success in God's eyes until you become what he assigned you to do. You can never be a success in God's eyes until you become what he prepared, what he planned. You will never be a success until God can look at you and say, ah, that's it. That's what I plan. Come on, man. That's what I plan. When God said to, to Adam, Adam, where are you? It wasn't like God didn't know where Adam was. Of course, God knew where Adam was. It's just that when God comes to the earth, he's looking for what he planned. When God comes to the earth, he's looking for what he prepared. And when God came to the earth and didn't see that, he was like, Adam, where are you? you you're not in the right place. You're not doing what I called you to do. Listen, don't let God look at you. I, I, you Listen, if God looks down and says, Rick, where are you? I'm like, oh, my bad. I need to repent. Let me get back over here. I was doing something wrong. God. I was outside of your, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I made a mistake. I, I, I apologize. But, but let me get back over here. Let me get back. Let me, let me reconsider. Let me, let me think about this thing. It's like the prodigal son. He had to come to himself. Wait a minute. What the heck am I doing over here? Eating stuff from hogs and slogs. No, 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 no. Let me come to myself. Let me go back to my daddy. Listen, sometimes as a human, you'll get out of alignment with your divine assignment. Sometimes as a human, you'll, you'll be disobedient and you'll be hard headed and stiff necked and the Holy Spirit will come and be like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, my bad. Oh, let me get back over here. Let me get back to being who it is that I'm called to be for such a time as this. You are special. You are called. You are anointed. You are graced for this. Say amen to that. Glory to God. Number two, <laughs> man, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited this morning. All right, let me try to calm down. All right, number two, Psalms 139 and 16, the Bible says, watch this, your life was mapped out before you were born. David said this, your eyes, 
your eyes, God, saw my unformed body and all the days of my life were ordained for me, written in your book before one day ever came to be. This is Psalms 139 and 16. Listen, God wrote a biography for your life, not an autobiography because you didn't write it. It's a biography because God wrote it. So God wrote a biography. There's a book in heaven with my name on it, Rick Pena. Glory to God. And so, so my job is to discover what's in that book. And my job is to live out what's in that book. My job is to become what God already decided. My job is to, is to walk out what God already planned from the foundations of the world. My job is to walk out what he wrote, to find out what he wrote, and then to walk out what he wrote so that could be who God called me to be for such a time as this. God chose you, number three. God chose you and blessed you before the world was made. He already blessed you. Ephesians chapter one, verses three through five. Let's, listen to what the Bible says. In in Christ, God has given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. In Christ, God chose us before the world was made. And before the world was made, God decided, this is not what I decided, this is what God decided. God just decided to make us his own children through Christ Jesus. And this was what God wanted. And this is what it pleased him to do. This is all about God. Your, your life is all about him. It's what he wants. It's what he decided. It's what he planned. And he did this before the world began. Number four, God established your purpose and he gave you the grace for it all before the world began. Second Timothy 1 and 9 says this. Watch this. Listen to this. For God saved us, right? This is Paul writing to Timothy. God saved us and called us. He didn't just save you, but he called you. He didn't just save you. So now you're not going to hell. You're going to heaven, but he called you for a specific assignment. So God saved you and he called you. So God saved us and he called us for, with a holy calling so that your life is about something that's bigger than you. My life is not about me. There's, my life is about something that's bigger than me. There's a holy calling. So God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, not because you earned it, not because you did everything right, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and his grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus. When? Paul said, before the world began my God, God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own purpose, not according to our own works, not according to me, not according to what I do, not according to what I failed to do. God did it based on Jesus. When? Before the world began. This is in the text. This is in the Bible. All right. Number five. And finally, I think I, I have to close with this. Let me just wrap this up. This is good. By the way, God already planned out your life. You will never truly be satisfied, fulfilled, until you become the man, the woman that God calls you to be. There's a certain level of fulfillment when you are doing what God called you to do. Isabella gave her testimony yesterday on the WWT prayer call. And, and, you know, she talked about missions. And when she started talking about missions, she started crying. And then other people started crying and all that. But the, 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 the tears were tears of joy. The problem, not the problem, but, but the point is that when you start walking in your divine assignment, you get a certain level of fulfillment that you can get and you cannot get any other way. Like when you are, when you're doing what you're called to do, like me preaching, when I, when I stand and people are like, oh my God, you're not nervous when you get up there. You're not, no, no I was born for this. I mean, like there's, there's, there's things that, yeah, I could be maybe nervous for, I'm not really a nervous person, but, but when it comes to preaching, no, 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 no. I'm born for that. And so, so I, I am in my most comfortable state when I, when I have the mic in my hand and I'm standing in front of people. I'm in my most comfortable state when I'm doing this right here, what I'm doing right now. Isabella was like, no, I love missions. Why? Because she's called to do it. When you're doing what you are called to do, you get a certain level of satisfaction that you could get no other way. There's a certain level of fulfillment because you're making a, a human alignment with your divine assignment. And when you get over here and you make a human alignment with your divine assignment, the grace is there. The peace is there. The anointing is there. The fulfillment is there. Oh my God, this series is going to be good. We're just getting started. Let's, that's enough for today. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Oh, Jesus. Let's say this. Say, Father, this is a season of leveling up for me. I level up by discovering your purpose for my life. You planned for my arrival. All the days of my life were mapped out before I ever took one breath. I am not a mistake. You set me apart for my divine purpose. You held an ordination service in heaven for me before I was born. You put your seal of approval on me 
to do what I'm called to do. You then sent me to this planet at just the right time. So I declare by faith that I'm going to get it done. You reveal your plans to me. I believe and I receive them. And I walk them out by faith. Completing my assignment is my singular focus in, my, in life. My life is not about anything else. I will arrive at your overall expected end. I will accomplish what I was born to accomplish. I will become the man I was born to be. This is why I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. So please, it's today's word. Tomorrow we're going to get another one. Apply it today and prosper. This might be one of those messages that you need to watch again. If you're not getting my notes, and th these are good notes. Go to todaysword.org, click on the red subscribe button on the top right corner of the website, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, do me a favor, two things. Leave me some comments in the chat. I'm going to go back and read those right now and then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. Have an amazing day. God bless you.